yes happy morning students hope you all are doing good after so long time again we are meeting each other okay welcome you all for the social class children okay fine happy to see you all again and in today's class we are going to see about the chapter that is the rise of nationalism in europe okay so today we are going to see about the rise of nationalism in europe we have already seen about the nationalism in india okay there what are all the concept we have seen so we were under the you know earlier we were under the control of monarchy and then after that we were under the control of colonialism and again the people were struggled to get the freedom or the nationalism yes or no and in today's class we are going to see about the rise of nationalism in the entire europe just guys imagine earlier we didn't have you know uh, now how we have divided the countries we didn't have countries like this okay because in the entire europe you know the continent the how the people were divided or how the places were divided it was like a monarchy you know the one kingdom will be there one king will be there you know the one provinces will be there so like that it was divided it was not like a countries has been divided okay so but later we have seen in your ninth standard do you guys remember in your ninth standard we have studied about the french revolution so in that french revolution we understood that you know that is the beginning for this kind of nationalism equality sovereignty freedom all those things so in france the people were struggling to be a free you know uh, to have a equality among themselves to become a freedom okay so there what happened children they started to fight against the monarchy okay same in the entire europe how the countries were divided how they became independent country okay so that concept we are going to see about in this chapter how the countries has been divided in europe so that is what here we are seeing that the rise of nationalism in europe so europe is a continent in that continent how many countries has been you know divided and how it has become independent nation that we are going to see okay because yes the topics we are going to discuss in today's class we'll see the introduction part alone and we'll go for recapitulation okay yes children so just imagine you know the europe is an entire continent okay one continent and in that continent so many countries we have got but earlier in the beginning earlier we didn't have you know the specific countries for example like german poland ireland we didn't have like this the german itself was you know the german was divided between the many you know the countries now as we call like poland i know like that so it was a part of the many other countries of the provinces so later you know they started to analyze they wanted to become a one single nation and then they started to fight against that or you know they started to work upon that and finally they got one single independent country or the nation okay so yes the one more thing children i know today's homework by the end of the day after this chapter what you people will be doing you just browse uh, you know check the old maps and all just you know take the you know the entire europe you know the continent map and try to mark the countries within that okay which are all the countries are there in that continent you have to mark okay so the next thing here we are telling that the rise of nationalism in europe okay what do you mean by nationalism children what is the meaning of nationalism yes exactly it is a identification with one's own nation and support for its interest so for example what happened for in india so it is a independent nation or independent country 
and here what happens? We'll be proudly telling that I'm an Indian. Yes or no? So if there is no India, so the people were struggling the identification of their own nation and support for its interest, whatever the interest about that particular country, it should be there without any interference of the other nations. Okay, see here, especially to the exclusion or detriment of the interests of other nations. So, other nations should not influence their interests. Okay, that is what the main idea of this nationalism. Okay, that is why the people were struggling in the entire Europe. So, in Europe, how the countries has been divided became independent nation. In this entire chapter, we'll be seeing about that. Okay, so in the entire Europe, how the countries were became independent. Okay, yes. So coming to the you know the introduction, the Frederick Soriu was a French artist who made a series of four prints in the year 1848 through which he visualized his dream of word made of democratic nations and republics. So we have already seen about the French Revolution children. So how those people were struggling to become a free, okay, the freedom are to get the equality or to abolish the monarchy, okay. So, you know, the Frederick, you know, he was a one of the French artists. So he has, you know, uh, drawn almost a series of prints, the paintings. So in his paintings, he used to visualize or he used to dream about the word. The how has to, you know, the word has to be filled with the democratic nations and the republics. Okay, the socialist republics. So we know that what do you mean by democracy? Democratic nations means that every country has to be independent and they should i know the people should have the freedom okay and republics it should have a own rights the people should have their own rights okay so that is what he was visualizing in his paintings okay see here the frederick soryu in his first print series depicted the men and women of all ages and social classes marching in a long train to pay homage to the Statue of Liberty. So just see this, you know, the painting children. So what he's imagining in his, you know, the first painting. Yes, the series of people, you know, the lot and lot of people, the men and women, both men and women with all the classes and all the ages. That means irrespective of their social classes, and their age all were you know marching towards like a human train it's like a human train they were marching towards you know to the to pay homage to the statue of liberty statue of liberty they were you know the freedom to show the freedom okay see here this procession way past the statue of liberty is followed by the usa Switzerland, Germany, Austria, the Kingdom of Two Slices, you know, the Lombardy, Poland, England, Ireland, Hungary and Russia. So, it was like a procession way past from the, all the people were, you know, the in the Europe, the many countries, they were doing this, okay. His imagination about the word, okay, see here. The Christ, sorry, Christ saints and angels gaze upon the scene from heaven which symbolizes fraternity among the nations of the whole world. So here what happens? Here you can see children, you know, the angels are there, the Christ is there, saints are there. So what, you know, they are blessing the people from the heaven, frat, you know, it is it symbolizes the fraternity among the nation of the whole world. So, all the nations, they are, you know, they're becoming fraternal. Okay. So, hope you guys are understanding, right? So, in this entire chapter, we will be studying about how in the Europe, the rise of this nationalism, 
about you know the one's own nation the idea of the own you know having their own nation has been started okay see the french revolution artist personified the liberty as a female figure so here what they are telling in the french revolution the artists you know they symbolized or they have shown the statue of liberty as a female figure okay even in india also we will be calling you know india as a mother you know motherland and language is like a female so we are treating like that so same there also in the french revolution the artist they started to imagine or they started to personify the liberty as a female figure okay so you, here we can see that it's a female figure see here for example what you know we'll see the example how they are personifying see the statue of liberty is a female figure yes or no children the statue of liberty is a yes female figure only and bearing the torch of enlightenment in the one hand see the torch of enlightenment in the one hand and the charter of rights of man in the other hand here we can see the charter of rights in the other hand and absolutist institutions were shown as shattered remains on the earth in the foreground of the image so what do you mean by absolutism yes children so they will be having like a supreme power they'll be having for example uh, take it as an example of india so india even though the central government is you know uh, the absolute power but still we have the supreme court to question them yes or no if something goes wrong we have supreme court to question them but earlier what happened for example if you take like a dictatorship the absolutism is a kind of like a dictatorship what happens there no one will be having rights to question them the absolute power the complete you know the supreme power will be with those things okay so finally what what they are telling the absolute uh, institutions were shown as shattered you know the shattered remains on the earth in the foreground of the image so they are telling that you know the statue of liberty is showing that the you know the torch of enlightenment in the one hand and the charter of rights in the other hand it is denoting that even the absolute is this complete power institutions were shown as a shatter that is closed okay see here the absolutist refers to the system of monarchical form of government which was centralized militarized and repressive so as i told you people what happens the monarchy what happens in the monarchy of course the supreme power will be with the hands of only single person that is the king other people will not be having any rights to question them yes or no so it was like a centralized the complete power was with the hands of single person and the militarized it is like a dictatorship kind of dictatorship almost and repressive they were not giving any you know the freedom to the people it was not free to the people and it is not helpful for the people the people were not having any rights to question those people okay as i told you people in india so even though we call it as absolute power will be with the central government but we have the supreme court to question them yes or no but here it's not like that so we have a democratic that is a republic country yes or no but earlier it was not like that the absolutist so the people who were having the complete power so the absolute kind of system was there the sovereign power the complete the supreme power was with the hands of those people okay hope you guys are understanding right so here what they are telling you know this the french artist he was you know the visualizing about the world in a you know it was it, it it has to be with the complete democratic nations so it has to be with the complete democratic nations and the socialist republic people okay that is what he was 
imagining about the world.